know the two big World of Darkness timelines. The classic timeline that's recently been given a second chance at life, and the criminally underrated reboot, Chronicles of Darkness. But what you might not know is that there was actually a third timeline. One that took up all of one rulebook and was written by one of the most influential designers in the RPG medium. This is the mysterious case of Monty Cook's World of Darkness. First, a little real world history. Monty Cook is a game designer who did a lot of work on the third edition of Dungeons & Dragons, writing the majority of the Dungeon Master's Guide, and apparently doing such a good job on it that Gary Gygax, the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons, said that the book made him a better Dungeon Master. Even after leaving Wizards of the Coast in 2001, he did a lot of work for other games, including publishing Arcana Unearthed, an alternate setting for Dungeons & Dragons 3rd edition. So, in 2006, when it was announced that Monty Cook was going to be working on his own interpretation of the World of Darkness canon, people should have been hyped! And yet, somehow, this game has remained pretty obscure as far as I can tell. I mean, I only discovered it when I was going Wikipedia surfing, and I mean... The game is abbreviated to McWad. How is that not an instant classic? Well, if you ask me... I place the blame squarely on Chronicles of Darkness. See, while I personally enjoy the reboot, people were, and still are to this day, pretty down on it. And given that McWad seems to take a lot more influence from Chronicles than the original timeline, that probably killed a good bit of the game's hype. Which is pretty sad considering that this was supposedly Monty Cook's last game before he retired. Now, with all that said, let's move on to fictional history, my real bread and butter. What innovative new ideas did Mr. Cook bring to the table with this game? Well, quite a few, it turns out. One of the big ideas Monty Mole had when coming up with the lore for his World of Darkness was that instead of vampires, werewolves, and mages being these ancient secret societies that controlled humanity from the shadows, they were the newcomers in our world. The game takes place on Earth, a few years after a near cataclysm took place. This eldritch horror, known as the Iconu, tried to wipe out all life on Earth, but was stopped by the Awakened, seemingly ordinary humans who had been blessed with extraordinary strength and will. They managed to hold off the Iconu, but not before it sent out a psychic shockwave, known as the Nightmare Wave. The Nightmare Wave, originating from the American Midwest, left nothing untouched, scorching the land, mutating the wildlife, and warping the humans it touched into something else entirely. So basically, the closer you get to the intrusion point, the more it resembles the Fallout universe, complete with mutated animals, raving madmen, and floating piles of giblets without skin because the graphics f***ed up again. I mean, that was just my GM. But speaking of warped humans, the player classes. You've got your standard vampires, werewolves, mages, as well as demons and awakened humans. So far, so odd. But the specifics are where it gets interesting. First, vampires. They drink blood, brood in the darkness, and are super sexy. But there's a bit more to McWad vampires than there. McWads. See, a vampire is actually two souls in a single body. The first is the soul the body belongs to, some poor rando who got struck by the nightmare wave, while the second is the soul of some ancient evil person. Serial killers, rapists, reaction YouTubers, the works. With some vampires, one personality is more dominant than the other, while for others, existence is a constant struggle for control. So it's basically a whole clan of Malkavians. Next, there's werewolves, spirits of vengeance, murder, rage, and all that other happy stuff that have possessed human bodies. Gosh, there's a lot of possession in this game. I think we might have found Monty Python's fetish here. Werewolf is a bit of a misnomer, however, since the beast form of a werewolf hardly resembles an actual wolf, and you could purchase a feat to change your beast form. But it's World of Darkness, so werewolf. Also, they did get rid of the near-human and near-wolf forms in this version, so that's... a thing. 
Next, there's mages who... Actually, aren't that different? They're just people who use their spirits to cast spells. Then there are the awakened who... Also, aren't that different. They're normal people. And lastly, there's demons, who once again are pretty unique. Demons are spirits of pure evil who, say it with me now, possess bodies in the earthly realm. Strangely enough, however, they can actually possess human bodies. Demons often possess objects and morph them into bodies to suit their needs. Demons are either tempters, the typical silver-tongued devil, or scourges, badass hellish warriors. So... Yeah, that's about it for Monty Cook's World of Darkness. As you can see, it's very different from anything else in the World of Darkness canon, and while it is universal law that anything different is to be burned at the stake, I think I'm gonna have to be right up there with the game because I actually really enjoyed this take on the series. I would have preferred it to use any other system than the D20 system, but I'm still really interested in running it someday. After I finish City of Mist, and uh... Dungeons and Dragons, and it's Mage, the Ascension, and Call of Cthulhu. F hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. As you can see, I'm trying out sort of a new style, uh, trying to be a little bit funnier because I feel like my videos have been a bit too dry lately. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. If you like this video, don't forget that there is a button for that. And please be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. If you want to support me in a monetary fashion, you can always sign up for some cool rewards in my Patreon, or you can make one-off donations at my coffee. But as always, none of that is necessary. Uh, liking, sharing, commenting, doing all that stuff is as good a way to support me as any. And as always, my name is Lily, and I will see you lovely people later.